Hey guys, it's Saturday, 4.26 p.m. on October 13th, 2018, and I think I'm pretty close to getting the answer why. It's a question that's been asked on my channel for the last year about all these hurricanes that I've been tracing. The question has been, why have these news reporters, why has the news, everybody been told that these storms are so much stronger than they actually are? And if you're not familiar with my channel, I'll have to walk you through this carefully just to explain to you what it is that I've actually been doing over the last year, among many other things. This this has been hurricane, we are getting 15. This has been one of the details that I have paid attention to in the news. I would come across reports like this right here. We have these people on the news tell us that there's a hurricane. Listen to what this guy says. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Davis. Here's your update on what is going to be Hurricane Michael here very shortly. I'm waiting for the 11 a.m. advisory to come in, but I don't expect any surprises. It'll likely become a hurricane here with the 11 a.m. advisory. Okay, so what he's telling us is that the hurricane is going to become a hurricane with the 11 a.m. advisory. I may be a stickler for details, guys, but that raised all sorts of red flags. Because technically what he should have said is upon or at the, not, not with the. It's not the actual advisory that makes the hurricane. Or is it? Here's what I do. is I take these, these data points that they give us on the news, this, this grotesque, oozing fear pornography, and I actually compare it to the information we have available to us that navigates our ships, including oil rigs, from point A to point B in the Gulf of Mexico. So on the one hand, we have this man telling us that there is a hurricane in this area with wind speeds of 74 miles an hour. And on the other hand, I have access to every single wind speed instrument in the entire Gulf of Mexico that tells us that there is nothing even close to a hurricane in the very areas that NOAA is pinpointing that a supposed hurricane exists. But this isn't the only data information I use. Oh, no, no, no. We have all sorts of information because we don't just navigate ships of oil from point A to point B. We also navigate ships in the air of humans <laughs> in airplanes from point A to point B. And those radar images comp compile this composite of many, many points of data where we can actually see that this doesn't even look like a hurricane because why? Because a hurricane, folks, is defined as a cyclonic storm that is going 74 miles an hour. See, it's in a tropical cyclone formation going 74 miles an hour. But that's not what we see here. That's not what we measure here at all. So over the course of this storm, what I do is I demonstrate that, look, hey guys, we're being told in the news that there is a hurricane here, and yet this cloud isn't even in the cyclone shape, and the wind speeds are only 15 miles an hour. Now that has been of great concern to me, and the handful of subscribers that I have had over the course of the last year, who by grace of God have been gentle and kind enough to encourage me to continue these investigations, despite the fact that I have not been able to answer why. At least not until today. And the answer that I want to bring to you guys makes me want to vomit. It's so disturbing. But stick with me for the people who don't know what else I've done on this channel. I'm going to go through this storm as the iconic example because, you guys, this is the first time that I've actually been able to demonstrate hurricane force winds. In the entire course of the year that I've been doing this, we have not had hurricane force winds. So let me back up, and I'm just going to show you a summary of what my videos have shown you. So I show you on Monday that at 2 o'clock, we were, we were told that there was a hurricane there, but there was no hurricane. Then in this video, I show you by 10 o'clock, hey this is Monday, 8.45 p.m. By 10 o'clock, there's still no hurricane there. I go through the NOAA buoys again. I demonstrate that the airports are only reading 7-mile-an-hour winds. And what I start showing you is happening here is that this telltale sign that I had seen time and time again that this little hook is forming on this backward sea formation of this storm, and I predict at this time that this thing is going to continue to be a backward sea formation that's going to grow this little hook as it approaches land. Sure enough, that's what I document to you and for you for the next 48 hours. 
So let's get to the next video here and I can just slowly but surely show you that that's exactly what we have. Right here as the day goes on and now we're finally at, what day is this? This is Tuesday now at 10 p.m. And, and I actually, you guys, I, I charted this every three hours by tracing on radar, and I definitely show you that slowly but surely, this little hook, it looks like a wrench. And this, is, this happened with Irma, this happened with Maria, this happened with Jose, it's happened with every single hurricane over the last year, okay? And the one complaint I've had is that at no time have I been able to register hurricane strength winds. I've registered high winds, for example, Hurricane Irma, got up to like 60 miles an hour and in the keys we had like 64 65 mile an hour winds you know but there was no i i, I had every wind speed instrument that's another story i was never able to demonstrate hurricane force winds until this storm so watch this storm here and you'll be able to see that as it traces around it's starting to come into a cyclone shape okay so this is this was on tuesday at 10, 11 p.m., and I go through all the buoy information. I show you there's no hurricane there. This is a windstorm, and I show you this is what it looked like, and it starts shaping into this kind of hook-looking thing, and I give you all the data, very kind of boring videos that just, just, just tell you that this is actually happening. For some reason, the people in the news are lying to us. Well, then the day of the storm, I show you that there is this crazy thing happening across our country where we see these, this thing is, is finally starting to take cyclone shape here. Let's see if I've got this here. Yeah, I show you that the storm finally starts taking a cyclone shape, finally starts developing into a cyclone. I pinpoint right when it happens. It happens on October 10th at 1.36 a.m. So this, I, like I said, I woke up every three hours to take these videos for you guys and show you the capture, screen captures of the radar. So here we have it. This is one o'clock in the morning. In, in 11 hours, this storm is going to get up to 86 mile an hour winds. But as I show you in this particular video, there is no hurricane actually here. I go through the NOAA buoys, I think in this one too. I'm pretty sure I almost always do that. Or maybe not. Maybe this one I just show you the radar. Oh, no, I, of course I went through the NOAA buoys. Of course I do. So I show you the NOAA buoys absolutely show absolutely nothing. There is no wind speed here that registers hurricane strength. You can tell by this column here in knots. They should say 64 knots. You don't see that anywhere. Okay, so this was at 1 o'clock in the morning on the 10th. Then I actually show you... Um, I actually show you that the storm is about ready to come onto land, and I'm still showing you that there is no hurricane force wind here. Again, this is right before the storm comes on land. I show you again, as you look at this data, you can slow the screen down, you can go back and watch the video. I show you that this, this storm is about ready to hit land, and although we do have high winds, they are not, look at this, point, point this out you guys, please look at this very carefully. This is 10.30 in the morning at 9.26 in Mexico Beach. The wind speeds are 20 miles an hour. This storm is right outside of Mexico Beach. In less than three hours, this storm is going to hit Mexico Beach, which means they should be having tropical storm force winds at the very, very least. Because what we were told by NOAA was, was that this storm had a 90-mile diameter. This storm is almost at Mexico Beach. In three hours, it is going to hit Mexico Beach, and yet the wind speeds are nowhere to be found in the Gulf of Mexico, anywhere, even close to hurricane strength winds. I point that out with all the buoy readings. Okay, then the storm finally hits shore. So let's take a peek at that video. Let me see if I can find that one for you right here as the storm comes onto shore. Here we have the storm actually hitting, coming onto shore. And I show you right outside. Now, this is the one that my computer kept crashing for. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't upload this one. But I'm going to upload it now as the raw data just so you guys can actually see the information that I captured that day. Because you'll see Apalachicola, Florida is having 58-mile-an-hour winds right as the eye of the hurricane is passing over Panama City. And what I point out in this video is that although there is a hurricane passing right through here, 
Mexico Beach, Florida is having 82 mile an hour winds right at this moment. This was at 12.08. I am doing the recording at 1.14. I show you Panama City Beach is only reading 38 miles an hour. This entire data set, you guys, I record and then I upload in another video. Now, I've finally, 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 after a year's worth of research, I have finally found a hurricane, quote unquote, hurricane strength wind force registered at one of these storms. But here's where the plot thickens. As I demonstrated in this video, targeted strike, I show you the limited area. The limited area was a 23 mile radius surrounded by cities that didn't even have hurricane strength winds at all. Whereas we should have seen a 90 mile diameter of a storm consuming this entire area with hurricane force winds, what we actually see is Panama City Beach, or Panama, yeah, Panama Beach next to Panama City, a 10, 15 mile difference between the two. Panama City registering 86 mile an hour winds and Panama Beach registering 30 mile an hour winds, 38 mile an hour winds. And then on top of it, IntelliCast changed its numbers. This has been a, a frustrating experience. I've been trying to document this stuff for you guys. And the whole time I'm wondering, why would they change? And the, and the numbers that they put into IntelliCast, you guys, were lower than 86 miles an hour. Meanwhile, we're being told by everybody and their brother that this is 150 mile an hour winds. Well, then, you guys, I started noticing this. Let's listen to this particular report. <sighs> Let me just open up this one recent file here. Let me just go to climate change propaganda. And now the, the, the picture will start coming into, into view as to why this happened. Let's just listen to what they have to say, and I'll walk you through this. The potential for tornadoes. Uh, and it's hard to believe. A lot going on. But going back to Michael, it was just a tropical depression last Sunday when it brought rain, wind, and waves to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba. Bumped up to a tropical storm at 1 p.m. Eastern Sunday afternoon. From there, Michael rapidly intensified in the Gulf, becoming a strong Cat 4 hurricane. Winds of 155 miles per hour when it made landfall uh, early Wednesday afternoon. Okay, now, this is what this is the propaganda we're getting. We're told that this the storm came all the way through the, uh, to, through the Gulf of Mexico, and it hit 150 mile an hour winds. Well, Actually, what I demonstrate to you guys is it didn't come anywhere close to that. The highest wind speeds we recorded were 86 mile an hour winds. And as I discovered yesterday, and I thank God that at least Weather Underground has the integrity to leave this data up for us. And you can go check this out yourself because I will put the links in the description. But if you go to Tyndall Air Force Base and you click on October 10th, 2018, you will get a secondary set of confirmation data points that will give confirmation to everything that I found and recorded for you in my hurricane hit strike video. Okay, and I'm just going to point out the key data points here that I used. Um, I used 11:45 p.m. as the or 11:45 a.m. as the benchmark, demonstrating that it was 55 miles an hour winds, and then 12:12 to show you that it was 86 mile an hour winds. All right. And then at 1224, the wind speeds had stopped and we're back down to 48 mile an hour winds. I also demonstrated to you that at Panama Beach, which is quite literally 10 miles away from here, 15 miles away from here, the highest wind speeds readings that we got were only 38 miles an hour. So why? Why? Why would they be lying to us? Why? That has been the question for the last year. What is going on here, my friends? Listen carefully, is your answer. And another of you, viewers like Robert D, have been asking us on social media, is Michael more evidence of climate change? Yes. Actually, the answer to this question quite specifically is yes. Michael is the evidence of climate change. And here's why. Because there's no such thing as climate change, guys. There's no such thing at all. And I'm going to demonstrate that they are using this to banter and beat up. And now, seriously, seriously, people, they have used their, their own propaganda. They've taken it to the next level. They have literally launched an attack on the American public in their falsehoods, trying to get the American public 
to believe and comply with climate change. They have beaten you people. They have assaulted you people and literally, literally used you. What I did not know was that the entire week that I was tracing this Hurricane Michael, this was happening in the United Nations. So 2030, I mean, we're talking about 12 years at this point here, uh, getting very close. And of course, all the while, I mean, we've already seen uh, climate change uh, take its toll on the planet. So yes, another climate uh, report and more bad news. This one, uh, of course, from the Intergovernmental Panel on uh, Climate Change. And I want to drill down the numbers here because they may not sound like a lot, but they are huge in... So just to let you know, you guys, what I'm telling you is that the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change was meeting the entire week that I was showing you that there was no hurricane here. That what we were seeing here was a contrivance, was weather modification, and it ended up being quite a strategic strike, but it was by no means could it possibly fall into the model of a hurricane. It was not a hurricane. We did not register hurricane winds in the Gulf, guys. We registered about 15 minutes worth of hurricane strength winds that could not possibly account for the damage and the literal erasing of property in Mexico City, Mexico Beach City. There's something so messed up here, guys, and it's all answered by this, this International Panel on Climate Change. This, you guys, is the agenda. Now, let me explain to you who is running this. These are the very Ephesians 6 principalities and rulers of darkness that have, that have power in this, in this world. We're told in Ephesians 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And this is very true. The people who are advancing the climate change agenda, people, have been trying to come at us with their pseudoscience for the last 15 years. And there are a lot of channels that have documented and a lot of researchers out there that have documented that this UN Agenda 2030, UN Agenda 2050, whatever it is, all these things are just communism wrapped up in a green label. Channels like the Corbett Report have spent 10 years showing you guys that this is a trap. This is a lie. This is a trap. There is, see, look at this. Lies, damn lies, global warming statistics. Corbett report himself. You guys, I will put the links in the description. There are a lot of people who have been warning you about this. But the one thing that we have not been able to document yet was that they are willing to injure you people to convince you that, these, that this climate change is real. And if you don't believe me let, me, let me just keep playing this video here. Here's another clip of the exact same thing. Thank you, Henrik at Red Ice, by the way, for teaching me about this. So I here's just know. the beginning of another one. Ivan Guerrero joins me now because there is a new report out about climate change, and it is not positive, to say the least. And you're going to break it down for us. Yeah, it is not positive. I mean, it just keeps getting uh, worse. Urgent transformational change. That is the headline. That is what we're talking about. That's what needs to happen for us to really make a difference here. And we're not just talking um, uh, on specifics. We're going to nail down the numbers here because they got very specific in this right. report. I've been reading through it. Let's have Okay, so now let's take a peek here at what he's saying. It just keeps getting uh, worse. Urgent transformational change. That is the headline. That Urgent transformational change. You guys, that has been the mantra that they have tried to get us on board with for at least nine years that I know of this, this Al Gore climate change nonsense. And the only, the only country in the entire world that seems to have its senses about itself is this one. It's the United States of America. So how could you possibly get urgent transformational change from the American people if you didn't convince them with a targeted strike and call it a hurricane? There's absolutely no way the American people will ever go along with this international panel of climate change unless you people are convinced that this is actually real. And what a better way to get you people to believe that this climate change is real than to fake storms all over the country at once. Now, people, I hope you understand how very, very serious the information that I'm telling you is. Because in 2012, they repealed the Smith-Mont Act. 
And the smith munt Act was the one line of defense that the American people had between their government and the media, using the media as propaganda against its people. And it's one thing for people to be given false information that doesn't hurt anybody. But what happened in Mexico Beach, people, is damaging. These are actual weapons being used against humanity. These people are evil. The people behind global climate change are wicked. They have made and launched an assault on the United States of America. And if we sit back and we believe these people and we go for unprecedented changes, we are absolutely, completely ca caught in a snare that we as a country will never get out of talking about that's what needs to happen for us to really make a difference here and we're not just talking change and it is not positive to say the least and you're going to break it down for us yeah it is not positive i mean it just keeps getting uh, worse urgent transformational change that is the headline that is what we're talking about that's what needs to happen for us to really make a difference here and we're not just talking um uh, on specifics, we're going to nail down the numbers here because they got very specific in this right. report. I've been reading through it. Let's head over here. And so here's the problem, you guys. We treat these people as our prophets. Now, I'm going to interject my perspective as a Christian because we are told in the scriptures, people, that those of you who don't receive a love of the truth are perishing. And it's exactly true. If you do not receive a love of the truth that I am bringing to you, whether it's the, through the Bible or or through these actual numbers that you yourself can trace by simply going to Weather Underground to trace the numbers for yourself. If you do not question the priesthood that you hold to an infallible status, you will become their slaves. Now granted, these are just puppets, but you, you believe these people. And the prophet Jeremiah, through the entire book of Jeremiah, is pleading with its people. He's pleading with them saying, please, don't believe the prophets and the priests that you hold to this esteem because they are lying to you. You guys, I know exactly how he feels. They are lying to you people. Please listen and do the research to investigate these lies yourself. And not only are they lying to you, but now they are actually injuring you with false flags and fake hurricane, hurricane attacks that are, are hurting you, that are actually hurting you. So the very week, the very week that this international panel on climate change is doing their investigation to come out with their report the day before this alleged Hurricane Michael strikes, this is what's happening. But that's not all. That's not all, guys. I'm not done. This propaganda even goes goes much further than that. Let's listen to the rest of this report. And remember back to those images from the Caribbean, hurricane specialist Dr. Greg Postel and Dr. Erica Navarro dug into this question. And these videos, just an example of how things can quickly change moving from the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. But Dr. Postel, there were some factors in play that could have aided. From the Caribbean all the way up to landfall. And Erica, let's have a look at what the conditions were like preceding Michael that might have allowed it to get stronger than otherwise. Yeah, so if you look back into the month of September, the warmest uh, September on record for 85 cities across the East Coast, a uh, tremendous heat that was locked in place by a ridge of high pressure that had been dominant okay. uh, for a long time over this. Let's listen to this again, because what they're telling us is the reason why this is, remember what the question was, is this evidence for climate change? And now they're actually giving you the explanation for why this is evidence for climate change. Let's just back up and listen one more time to what they're going to tell us. Because she's going to give us the, the evidence for why this is evidence for climate change. This is their argument. The September, the warmest uh, September on record for 85 cities across the East Coast. A uh, tremendous heat that was locked in place by a ridge of high pressure that had been dominant uh, for a long time over this region. Okay, a ridge of high pressure and heat that had been locked in this area over a long time in this region. I want you to take a very close look at where this ridge of high pressure and temperature was locked in in this region. And then I want you to take a peek at this video capture by Never Lose Truth, whose channel I will put in the description here, because Carol has caught some very interesting screen captures of this. 
This just happens to be a nightly occurrence on the University of Wisconsin-Madison radar page. You can see this happening every single night of the year where the different storms that are brewing or the different weather modification agendas that are being unlaunched can be seen like a Christmas tree lighting up across our country. I want you to look at this, people. This is what is happening in your backyard. While you are watching, you know, Dancing with the Stars, and you're playing Angry Birds, and you're listening to, you know, some new band on iTunes, this is what is happening in your backyard to lock in high-pressure heat for the entire month of September. And since they don't ever, ever use radar in your weather reports anymore, they use CGI, they use NASA imagery, and they use models, but they never show you what is actually there. You people do not get a chance to see the actual instrumentations of weather modification being used against you like a weapon of mass mind control, not in that these little towers are actually going to manipulate your mind in the very moment, but in it's that what they produce are these high pressure systems of high heat in these particular regions that they actually use. They've created these situations, people. They have created these high pressure heat systems and then they tell you it's climate change. Now that, my friends, ought to make you furious because the problem I'm showing you here is that these are self-inflicted wounds. These are self-inflicted wounds, not by carbon footprint, not because cows fart, not because we exhale, but because we have monsters, monsters running our government, monsters who have actually used the FCC to ban us from being able to protest against the installation of these towers in our backyard. You guys, all the towers that we see all over the entire country are not for transmitting a cell phone signal. People, this is what those towers do. And it is the exact measure, it's the exact instrumentation by which our government has been able to pull off this scam that they are now calling climate change. Look at this, it's the exact same footprint. This is not normal, people. You are being attacked by powers that are very, very powerful. Look, if you think that the people at the United Nations and the globalist agenda don't, don't have influence over our military to use our military technology against us, to create a false storm, to make it look like, like a hurricane actually hit, to get you guys to believe in hurricane damage from, from um, climate change the very day after the climate change proposal comes out, then you guys are crazy. You guys are consenting to your own slavery. This was a strategic attack against the United, State of, uh, the United States of America by a bunch of globalists who are out of control and have absolutely no problem killing you people. Are you going to wake up and see that your country is under attack? Are you going to wake up and see that this is a freaking lie? <sighs> I can't believe this. I mean, honestly... I'm shocked that I'm actually, I'm actually the person who's sitting here showing you that this entire storm has been a coordinated attack on humanity. People, this is, this is where propaganda takes physical form and injures people. They're, these people are dead serious about what they're trying to convince you of, and they're not going to stop. And if you guys don't stop playing Angry Birds and playing your solitaire games, and, and, and watching your Dancing with the Stars and listening to your, your iTunes and stuff, you guys are never going to survive this, and neither are your kids. What I'm showing you here is terrifying, and this is very intentional. And the powers that be, people, hate your guts, and they want to take your soul directly to hell. Here's the deal. Whether it's for salvation in this life or the next, the Lord Jesus Christ has told us, people, that if we don't receive a love of the truth, we are perishing. I suggest that you take his words very, very seriously and pick up a copy of the Bible. Embrace a love of the truth, at least for the numbers that you can compare to measure what you're being told by this priesthood that you so dearly believe and love and see if these priests are lying to you. Because I guarantee you, they are lying to you. I have shown you the evidence myself. 
And if you're if you're if you if you get to a point where you actually believe the truth in these, then pick up the Bible and read the Bible. And then you'll really be able to have the eyes that can see those people who are behind you, misleading you, and, and, and pushing you in the wrong direction. It's time, people. It's time we wake up and really and really address reality here. I'll keep investigating this, and I hope you understand why I say that this is very serious stuff and America is under attack. <laughs>